Tuesday morning and we're off to Scotland today. We just got the combo all ready. We'll come around the back here as well. You can see the Bowmans in action. Insane. Beacons and light bars are Cody UK. Deck spec 5, 5% off. But let's get driving because I think it's another three hours we've got to go and inside the combo. We've arrived. We've got a few jobs today, but the transit's the main one. The combo. So the first job is the transit custom. What we're doing to this, four grill burner lights. It's already had some fitted. And to the rear. We are putting uh, hideaways in the back lights, both sides, and then a slimline beacon on the top and get rid of these. They're horrendous. See the full of water as well, and that beacon as well. Get a nice slimline one on. We'll get this bonnet opened. So I think these grills are just a one year yoke out, like that. I did just pull this a bit harder and it's come off. So this is a grill beforehand. So we've got a ton of lights for the week from Beacons and Light Bars. These are the first ones we're going to be using. We're going to be using these four LED burner lights for the grill. One, two, three, four LEDs. And you've got the six LEDs as well which we've got in this box for a different part of the job. But we need to get these mounted somehow behind here. Two top, two on the bottom. So that's two of the burners in there. They're just cable tied in. You cannot see the cable ties on that one. You can just see the corners of that one. We need to do the other side, obviously. But this is how it looks from the back. That's the only way, really, to mount them unless you get dedicated transit ones, which I don't even know if it is such thing for this grill. So we'll get the other side done. Then I'll start doing the harness and show you that section. So that there is the grills done, the grill burners, one, two, one, two, just need to do the harness for the back and then put it back in. So I'm going to grab some tools, I need my crimpers, probably, i yeah, try these ones as well. I do have a lot of nipex that I haven't used, but I want to try and use them. And then we've got my connectors here, we'll need some straight book connectors. These red ones are the smallest ones, red is the small, blue is the medium. And yellow are the bigger ones. With these crimpers, I found that they let go of the crimp a bit too early, but I think that's maybe because I've used them so much. So these Nipex ones, they've just got a universal crimp on with the colours matching, so I might try them. See what they're like for crimping. All I've done is took two wires from each burner, put them together, and then I can just put a little butt connector on here. With that in there, and then crimp them. So, little pull test, they're solid, it's going nowhere that. That's the both done to both sides. Now what I need to do is just connect these and then pull them off, put a Deutsch connector plug on and then it'll be plug and play into the grill. If I ever need to remove the grill, you can, without cutting any wires. We've got the Dura 3 core out and we're using 0.20mm wire, which is far too like, overkill for this, even though it's a really thin wire. It didn't do well over this amount of air. Burner lights. So that's the harness to them lights and then heat trunk in here. I need to do the other side. So I've used the Nipex wire strippers to cut this off perfect here. Once Zach's pulled the wires through, because I've got them in there pulling the wires through, I'll get up a video of me doing one side so that you just can see how I'm doing it. We've then got the cause of wire bed off because they're just going to go into the book connectors, join up with this one and then off like a, with a dodge connector, like I said. That's the wiring harness done. I think you put my plug on the side, but you can see where it's running through. I'll flip it round and you can't see it once the grill's like that. Right, so it's connector time, and I've decided instead to use these super sealed ones because I've got some boots here as well and I want them fully waterproof. So I'm going to make it 
it's gonna look mint. So I've got my plug on, I thought I'd show you. So, the conduit's up here, we're taped on. Then we've got a super seal plug on. I've changed it from Deutsch to this one. And then I've got my boot over it there as well, so it's fully waterproof. This is the exact same setup as what comes on a laser light. Just these are better, because the deck's back. And then I've got my kit out, which I showed before. I did buy this bag. Well, the bag didn't come like this. I bought loads and put them in a bag. So I have like four pin ones and loads of other ones. So fully waterproof for the customer. Fully reliable. So I've tied my wiring in the main harness. And we'll have the connector I've just put there. So I pull this through the boot. I'll get a female put on that side and that'll be it done. Straight the plug in there, then I'll show you how to do the switch on the interior. So that's the headlight back in and the wiring behind here. You can't see any of the wiring. It's actually sat underneath the headlights or water ingresses to a minimum where that plug is. It's going to be 100% reliable. So that's the burners installed there. They look so neat once they're in. They just look factory fit really. But I'm happy with that. It's like still pulling the wiring through, so once I've done that, I'll pull the beacon in. Now I'm going to remove the rear lights. And then we'll get the hideaways fitted. But they look like just two T30 screws and we'll get the back lights out. So that is one rear light clustered out in the transit. And that's the clutch that's separated. The indicator goes in here, so when you get it in the side of here, you see there's a little hole for it there. So we'll get it into there. These nip X90 degree snips, or the 45 stories, are good for cutting away from the plastic to get the light in. These are from Beacons and Light Bars, it's the Lap and Electro. Lap Electro, sorry. You get these out. There's the light. This is the light unplugged from its little harness. Now cut away some of this here, so we can get the hideaway light in. So we get it fit inside the plus. As soon as it's off camera, it goes in then. We'll get it like that. That's one mounted in there. And then if I flip the light over, you can see. Well, you can't see, but if you look at the side, you can see it there. It's looking good. So now at the back of the light, it screws on here. It's got like a cap on, and it has a three T25s. But I have my plug coming out of here for the hideaway beacon. Then you have the normal plug here for the light. But the hideaway beacon, just uh, shave a tiny bit of the plastic off, you can get that through. And that's one done. So the beacon plugs in, comes in this little control unit here. We've got a lot of wire, so you don't have to run any more wires. You get a load of wire with it. I'll just put it on the M12 no walk battery so you can see it. Then if you want to change flash pattern, you take the blue and you tap it on the negative for half a second and it'll flick through the pattern. The yellow is to sync it with the other one. So I'll quickly flick it through a pattern and we'll see what it looks like. It's got many to do but I'll show you once I've built it up. It's easier than clicking it on the battery there. We've got the big beacon bar now to put on the transit. This is a 955mm lap comet. Uh, slimline ones, getting such good reviews off these. Everybody's loving them and how neat and discreet they look. Until they're on obviously. Get these bag of fittings. Also these fittings as well and then you get the clamps from the bottom. So to fit these mountain bikes, you just get your bolts, put them in, like that, fold them together, spin your bracket around, so that's one on, then you want a flat washer, then a spring washer, then a nut. That's the brackets on there, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go and measure it all up on the roof, I'm going to ribbon at the roof, so we can just bolt this in. And you can see all the fittings, all the bolts, nuts and washers, they're all stainless steel so they're not going to corrode. You also get these to make the beacon raised up off the roof as well, which I'll probably be using. And it stops vibration through everything, making bolts come loose. They do have spring washers on so they should be okay. So the original wire I went through here but I'm moving it so I'm going to seal that up. And I've took it through the rubber grommet here. It's more sealed here and then you don't have the wire exposed so it looks crap. We've measured to the centre and then I've marked my holes for the beacon light and the two and a half centimetres off 25mm either side so it's going to go on spot on. Firstly what I'm going to do is drill these holes out, get these rim nuts, put them in, crimp them up, this will bind up against the body 
and squash in, then you'll have a thread left on the inside rather than using nut and bolt. So we've got all the, the holes drilled on top of the roof, these will go in, then be uh, squashed in there by this tool, clock machine mark. So that's that riveted in there, we'll screw this out. And then we'll have a thread there instead of nut and bolt. And it just makes the job so much nicer and neater and easier to do. That's them all done on the roof. That's the beacon fit. And uh, that's it in conduit to that hole. So we've got the wires through, we've cut them down to equal lengths because it was just far too much. We'll get the wire here with the nipex strips, put it around there, twist it once, take off it, pull it off. And there's your wire bed, that's simple. I'll go through them all on video and show you how I cope with the different sizes. But it's just simple when you've got one of these. And it, it doesn't cut through, it makes a perfect cut. Last one. I think this one's too small. Yeah, so you see that didn't open, so I'm gonna shut this, come to the other side, the jaws are smaller. Put it in like that, twist it, and take off. And that's it done there. Perfect cut again. So we've got these other strippers, which they just grab a hold of the wire and strip it off. That's what I use for doing that. That's simple, just makes my life easy. I'm going to go through them all and then we're going to use what we need and what we don't need. You can do three at a time if you want. It's a bit thicker core, that's a 0 0.40 wire so it's a bit bigger. Oh, she's making a butcher job. There, it's looking okay there. All these can be cut down in any way, I've got far too much wire to play with. So we'll do two at a time. You know, these used to be really good, but obviously I've done that much wiring now. I don't like doing the job. So that's them all stripped. So we've got a bolt connector, we're just going to use these crimps here. Put on the blue one. Make sure it's in fully, crimp that down. Make sure it's nice and tight, it's not coming off, that's spot on that. We'll do a few more and see where we're at. So we've got the wires connected. What I've done is just all the earths together, all the lies together, and then we'll have the sink, which is into the green wire, because it's going to be the sink wire into there. Pattern change is the blue. That's me putting the wiring away there now. So that's the wiring done into the switch at the back. And obviously we'll have it at the front here. That's the switch in there. All sorted. That's it sorted. Grill flashers and they're all synced up. Oh, the roof beacon. Then we'll have the hideaways in the back. 